here on this special day. Italy, Argentina, Germany, Chile, and I believe that means everybody. Of Americans, there is Father David, Eric David Burkell, there's Father Adrian Alexander Lawrence, Father Dane Andrew Sherber, Father Luke Beddingfield Gerwicki, Father Hanson Juan Nguyen, Father John Matthew The song presently being sung was written and composed by Marcela de Maria y Campos, a consecrated of Regnum Christi.
the Council of Hands will be Monsignor Jesus Herrera. Monsignor Zeno Astanufo. João Francisco Sam. Edson de Mello. Evilso Sores Nobre. Francisco de Assis dos Santos Gabriel. Monsignor Alfredo José Espinosa Mateus. Monsignor Andres Gabriel Ferrada Maria. This moment is singing a Latin verse uh, proper to the ordination mass. It comes from Philippians 1, verse 21, and Galatians 6, verse 14. Translated means, for me to live is Christ and to die is a gain. My only glory is in the cross of Christ, my Lord Jesus Christ, for through whom which the world was created. Del Padre, was del Figlio, e dello Spirito Santo. Amen. La grazia e la pace di Dio nostro Padre e del Signore nostro Gesù Cristo sia con tutti voi. Fratelli e, care, e, e sorelle carissimi, ringraziamo Dio, Padre di bontà, che ci concede di celebrare l'Eucaristia in questa Basilica Romana dedicata a San Paolo Apostolo. Oggi, fratelli carissimi, presentate alla Chiesa questi diaconi affinché siano ammessi all'ordine presbiterale. Grazie al battesimo sono già parte viva del popolo sacerdotale, ma attraverso l'imposizione delle mani saranno consacrati i ministri di Cristo, maestro, sacerdote e pastore, per contribuire con il loro servizio ad edificare, ad edificare il popolo di Dio che è la Chiesa. Insieme a loro rivolgiamoci umilmente al Padre misericordioso e Dio di ogni consolazione, perché purificati da ogni macchia di peccato siamo resi degni di celebrare in letizia questo santo rito. Now we will begin the penitential act. Confesso a Dio Onnipotente e a voi fratelli che ho, che ho molto peccato in pensieri, parole, opere e omissioni. Per mia colpa, mia colpa, mia grandissima colpa. E supplico la Beata Sempre Vergine Maria, gli angeli, i santi, e voi, fratelli e sorelle, di pregare per me, il Signore Dio nostro. Dio Onnipotente, abbia misericordia di noi, perdoni i nostri peccati e ci conduca alla vita eterna.
preghiamo. O Signore Dio nostro, che guidi il tuo popolo mediante il ministero dei sacerdoti, concedi a questi diaconi della tua Chiesa, oggi da te eletti al presbiterato, di essere perseveranti nel servire la tua volontà, perché nel ministero e nella vita possano renderti gloria in Cristo. Egli è Dio e vive e regna con te nell'unità dello Spirito Santo per tutti i secoli dei secoli. Lectura del libro de Isaías. Reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. El Espíritu del Señor the Spirit está sobre of the Lord mí. God upon me. Porque el Señor Because the Lord me ha ungido. has anointed me. me ha enviado He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly. Para vendar to heal the brokenhearted. Para to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners. La libertad. Para proclamar el año de gracia del to announce Señor, a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication Dios. by our God. Para consolar a los afligidos. To comfort all who mourn. Los afligidos de Sion. To Para place all those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes. En perfume de fiesta. To give them oil of gladness Sobatidio. in place of mourning. En a glorious mantle instead of of a listless spirit. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm is 115. I shall offer the cup of salvation to the Lord. How, sh how shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. To you I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. gifts, 
and sacrifices for sin. He is able to deal patiently with Aaron and Karen, for he is himself beset by weaknesses, and so must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. One does not take this honor on his own initiative, but only when called by God as Aaron was. Even Christ did not glorify himself with the office of high priest. He received it from the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days when he was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to God, who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and when he suffered, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Designated by God as high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. Parola de Dios. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. You have the words of, et- of everlasting life. I will sing forever the mercies of the Lord. I will sing forever his praise. Tell all the nations the wonders of the Lord. Go throughout the whole world and proclaim the wonderful things he made, for his mercy is eternal.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and prayed, saying, Holy Father, I revealed your name to those whom you gave me out of the world. They belong to you, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. I gave them your word, and the world hated them, because they do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world any more than I belong to the world. Consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I sent them into the world. And I consecrate myself for them, so that they also may be consecrated in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. presentation of the candidates. So the rite of priestly ordination begins officially. Each of the candidates will be called by name and responds present. On behalf of the church, the superior will present the candidates to the celebrant as worthy to be ordained to the priesthood in the church. The celebrant will accept them in the name of Jesus Christ and then will give the homily. Let those who are to be ordained priests please come forward. Ecomi. Anthony Lorimar Siqueira de Queiroz. Ecomi. Luke Bedingfield Rabuiki. Ecomi. Jose Pablo Poblete Madrid. Ecomi. Jesús Raciel Guerrero Castillo. Ecomi. César Jairo Tobón Ramírez. Ecomi. Each one of these men about to be ordained a priest has been a deacon for almost a year, working 
in their respected countries, which range from Germany, Colombia, United States, Venezuela, Ecuador, France, and others. John Matthew Van Dorp. Eccomi. Melchior Poisson. Eccomi. Michael Oscar Hemp. Eccomi. Juan Pablo Maria López Castellano. Eccomi. Daniel Ochoa Ramirez. Each of them have been in formation now between 11 to 13 years. This is the culmination of all of these years of work and prayer. Lucas Denier Machado. Ecomi. Dave Andrew Sherber. Ecomi. Sebastiano Maria Zanin. Ecomi. Carlos Daniel Villaseñor Ledesma. Ecomi. Andres Felipe García Ramírez. Ecomi. Michelle R. Car Salazar. Ecomi. Now the superior, Father John Connor, will present these men to the celebrant. Eminentissimo Padre, la Santa Madre Chiesa chiede che queste nostre fratelli siano ordinati presbiteri. Your Eminence, Holy Mother Church, asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, for service as priests. The celebrant asks, do you judge them to be worthy? After inquiry among the people of Christ and upon recommendation of those concerned with their training, I testify that they have been found worthy. We rely on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, and we choose these men, our brothers, for priesthood in the presbyteral order. Thanks be to God. We now pass to the homily. Carissimi ordinandi, cari confratelli, dear brothers to be ordained, dear congregation, dear brothers in the priesthood. If for every bishop, Priestly ordination is always a joy and an occasion to thank the Lord for the gift of a vocation that reaches the goal of the priesthood. It is even more so for me because of the fraternal friendship that has bound me to your congregation for so many years. Thank you, dear Father John, for this great gift. Our joy, above all, is the expression of the joy and the gratitude of the Church and to the Lord for having called these young men to consecrate their lives to Him and that today He counts among His ministers. It is the joy of all legionaries, of the communities where they have lived, of the superiors and formators who have accompanied them during the long and demanding journey of their spiritual and intellectual preparation. In these moments, our thoughts also go out to their families, especially those who could not be present but are close to us in affection and prayer. The pages of scripture that have been proposed for our meditation help us to prepare for the solemnity of the rite of ordination, which with its gestures and words is already a homily. I would like to dwell on the passage from John's Gospel, which takes us back to the Last Supper, 
to Jesus praying for the apostles. They now belong to God, who has called them through him, and they have become his. Now, as he is about to take the path of Calvary and will no longer be among them, he turns to the Father because they will remain at the mercy of the world and will be deprived of his visible presence and his protection. What does Jesus ask for them and for those who will take their place in the centuries to come? Therefore, what does he ask for us as well? It seems there are two themes overall to me. I do not pray that you remove them from the world, but that you guard them from the evil one. They are not of the world, as I am not of the world. Until then, Jesus had been the meeting point of their small community. He had been its center, so much so that they had left everything behind, family and work, and had become one with him. However, when he will no longer be in their midst, they should not lose confidence and joy, because he lives with the Father, and they will receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus does not ask that his disciples live in an idyllic world where everything is easy, but that their faith be safeguarded and preserved in the midst of difficulties, misunderstandings, temptations, not trusting in their own strength. During the Chrism Mass on Holy Thursday, the Pope reminded us that we must not allow ourselves to be maligned by the temptation of triumphalism, of success, nor caged in the mentality of the simple official who, instead of keeping his gaze fixed on the cross of Jesus, takes pleasure in his own abilities. Dear brothers to be ordained, in a few moments I will impose my hands on your heads, and with me, so will all the priests present. There are no words because the gesture speaks for itself, and as you know, it indicates the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which in biblical tradition is the sign of God's blessing and the conferring of a singular mission. With the very ancient gesture of the laying on of hands, Pope Benedict said in one of his homilies, the Lord takes possession of me, saying to me, you belong to me. However, in saying this, he also said, you are under the protection of my hands. You are under the protection of my heart. You are kept safely in the palm of my hands. And this is precisely how you find yourself in the immensity of my love. When you find yourself in difficult moments of your priestly life, Think of this presence, this protection of the good God. He always keeps his hand over you. He wants to accompany you and protect you at all times. In his prayer to the Father, Jesus asks again, consecrate them in the truth. Your word is truth. For them, I consecrate myself, that they too may be consecrated in truth. To sanctify means to remove all that is profane and to dedicate oneself to God. In every offering, the gift must be accompanied by a disposition of sacrifice in Jesus. With these words, consecrates himself and all things to the Father. The consecration of Jesus is above all a separation from the world, making it the exclusive property of the Father. 
and a sacrifice because he gives himself to the Father by offering himself as a victim on the cross. Consequently, we too, like the apostles, are priests and consecrated because we are united to Jesus, the one and only eternal priest. Let us allow him to enter into our hearts. Let us empty ourselves of all that impedes our encounter with him. Let us throw ourselves into his arms. Let us trust him totally. Let us let ourselves be carried where he wants us to go. When I anoint your hands with sacred chrism, I will say, May the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father has anointed in the Holy Spirit and in power, keep you for the sanctification of his people and for the offering of the sacrifice. Already in the Old Testament, the anointing is a symbol of holiness, and with the anointing, once again, the Lord takes possession of you and entrusts you with a special mission. I return to Pope Benedict's homily. The human hand is the instrument of human action. It is the symbol of the human capacity to face the world. The Lord now wants our hands so that they may become his own in the world. He no longer wants them to be instruments for taking things, but rather by putting ourselves at the service of his love, they can pass on his divine touch. And Jesus continues now in his prayer. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. The Church's inherent vocation, her deepest identity, her service to mankind is to preach the Gospel of Jesus, to perpetuate his sacrifice in the Mass, the memorial of his death and resurrection, to be the channel of his grace. Our consecration is not for us but for those to whom we are sent to transmit and communicate to them what we have received so that following in his footsteps with his same love and obedience, his word may bear much fruit and with the grace of the Holy Spirit reach the ends of the earth through our preaching and the witness of our lives. Mother Teresa wrote to a priest, Let us grow more and more in Christ-likeness, so that all those we meet, when they look at us, see only Jesus in us and through us. Because the Apostle draws others, first of all, with his testimony of life, and example. The good Father Alvaro, of blessed memory, in the letter he sent to the congregation for the year of priests, described the figure of the legionary as a man of God who brings Christ to souls and offers them what he himself has contemplated as a humble servant of all with the same spirit of service as Jesus who humbled himself. The priest should always be an open door to everyone. He must know how to listen, treat each person with all his heart dedicating to each one the time necessary, loving and welcoming everyone like Jesus Christ himself. He doesn't only give his time, but his very life without limits. It can be said that his vocation is to be a martyr in the service of his neighbor. 
a single soul is worth all the efforts of a priest. Before the prayer of ordination, you will perform a gesture that is rich in meaning, one that always leaves a lasting impression, that of prostrating yourselves on the ground like Moses and like the visionary of the Apocalypse, who prostrates himself at the feet of the Son of Man. With you we will invoke the intercession of all the saints, so that they may join our prayer in asking the Lord for his help for your ministry, that he may strengthen you with the gifts of his grace and give you the certainty that he will always be with you. Today, you begin a journey that you do not know where it will lead you, but be certain that wherever you are, the Spirit of the Lord will be your strength and your light. We entrust you to the Virgin Mary, Queen of the Apostles. Put your hand in hers and ask her to take care of you, to protect and preserve you, as she did with Jesus. Amen. In a few moments, we will pass to the promises of the candidates. The celebrant will be asking some questions, and the deacons express their desire to be priests and promise to be faithful in the fulfillment of their priestly ministry, in the proclamation of the word of God, in the celebration of the sacraments, and in their constant prayer. They will also promise to be obedient to the church in the person of the bishops and their religious superiors. Figli carissimi, prima di ricevere l'ordinazione del presbiterato, my sons, before you proceed to the order of the presbyterate, declare before God's people your intention to assume this priestly office. Are you resolved with the help of the Holy Spirit to discharge without fail the offices of the priesthood in the degree of the presbyter as a conscientious fellow worker with the bishops in caring for the Lord's flock? Are you resolved to exercise the ministry of the word worthily and wisely, preaching the gospel and explaining the Catholic faith? Are you resolved to celebrate with devotion and fidelity the mysteries of Christ, especially the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation, as the Church has handed them down to us for the glory of God and the sanctification of Christ's people? Are you resolved to implore God's mercy together with us for the people entrusted to you, fulfilling the mandate to pray constantly? Are you resolved to consecrate your life to God for the salvation of his people and to unite yourself more closely every day to Christ the High Priest, who for us offered himself to the Father as a perfect sacrifice? Now all those to be ordained priests pass in front of the celebrant, promising obedience 
Do you promise respect and obedience to the diocesan bishop and to your legitimate superior? May God, who has begun his good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Prometti al Vescovo Diocesano e al tuo legittimo superiore pigliare rispetto e obbedienza. Dio che ha iniziato in te la sua opera la porti a compimento. Prometti al Vescovo Diocesano e al tuo legittimo superiore Figliale rispetto e obbedienza. Sì, lo prometto. Dio che ha iniziato in sé la sua opera, la porti a compimento. Prometti al Vescovo Diocesano e al tuo legittimo superiore, figliale rispetto e obbedienza. Dio che ha iniziato in te la sua opera, la porti a compimento. Prometti al Vescovo Diocesano e al tuo legittimo superiore, As we've already said, e all these young men sì, have been prometto. within formation Dio for about 11 to 13 years. However, after anywhere between seven to nine years, they all take what is called final vows, in which they vow publicly before the people of God to live in poverty, chastity, and obedience. They take these vows because it has already been seen as the three virtues that Christ lived most perfectly on earth, as an abandonment of his will to the will of the Father. This promise of obedience that they're making now is out of, is by the example of Christ Jesus, who made himself obedient to death, even death on a cross. This obedience can demand many different things of these young men, and they're asking for the grace of God right now to give them the strength and perseverance that they'll need in order to bring this to accomplishment. Prometti al Vescovo Diocesano e al tuo legittimo superiore Filiale rispetto e obbedienza. Sì, lo prometto. Dio che ha iniziato in te la sua opera, la porti a compimento. Prometti al Vescovo Diocesano e al tuo legittimo superiore, filiale rispetto e obbedienza. Sì, lo prometto. Dio che ha iniziato in te la sua opera, la porti a compimento. Prometti al Vescovo. You can remember in sacred scripture that it was through a sin of disobedience that the world we fell into ruin, that we all fell into original sin. And it's through the obedience of Christ that the world is redeemed, that the world is rebuilt. And it's through these simple acts of obedience that we make, not just these men, but these, but all of us as the church of God that we can make Prometti to our Lord to help rebuild this world, to help Christ's kingdom really come down on this earth through our simple acts of obedience to whatever he may ask of us, whether it be to be a good priest as it is for these men to obey their superiors, their bishops, whether it be those who are, who are married, all of us have these simple acts of of obedience, of fidelity that we can make to God in our daily lives to help bring this kingdom, to rebuild this world, and bring God's kingdom here on this earth. Prometti al Vescovo Diocesano e al tuo legittimo superiore Actually, the acolyte here and the deacon making the promise are actually brothers. And you can see them here in this shot.
Prometti al Vescovo Diocesano e al tuo legittimo superiore filiale rispetto e obbedienza. Sì, lo prometto. Dio che ha iniziato in te la sua opera, la porti a compimento. Prometti al Vescovo Diocesano e al the tuo legittimo superiore And this was a, an old sign Dio of what a slave would do opera, to his master. It was to show total submission. That's why many times when we go to prayer, we hold our hands like that to show that we are totally submitted to the Lord in prayer. This Prometti sign then is that sign of submission, total submission, superiore, that they owe now to their, to their proper superiors. Sì, we'll see later on another gesture, even a little more strong, showing the submission when they lie prostrate on the ground. Prometti al Vescovo Diocesano e al tuo legittimo superiore filiale rispetto e obbedienza. Sì, lo prometto. Dio che ha iniziato in te la sua opera la porti a compimento. Prometti al Vescovo Diocesano e al tuo legittimo superiore filiale rispetto e obbedienza. Sì, lo prometto. Dio che ha iniziato in te la sua opera, la porti a compimento. Prometti al Vescovo Diocesano e al tuo legittimo superiore filiale rispetto e obbedienza. Sì, lo prometto. Dio che ha iniziato in te la sua opera, la porti a compimento. Prometti al Vescovo Diocesano e al tuo legittimo superiore, filiale rispetto e obbedienza. Sì, lo prometto. Dio che ha iniziato in te la sua opera, la porti a compimento. Prometti al Vescovo Diocesano e al tuo legittimo superiore, filiale rispetto e obbedienza. Sì, lo prometto. Dio che ha iniziato in te la sua opera, la porti a compimento. Prometti al Vescovo Diocesano e al tuo legittimo superiore filiale rispetto e obbedienza. Sì, lo prometto. Dio che ha iniziato in te la sua opera, la porti a compimento. Prometti al Vescovo Diocesano e al tuo legittimo superiore filiale rispetto e obbedienza. Sì, lo prometto. Dio che ha iniziato in te la sua opera, la porti a compimento. Prometti al Vescovo Diocesano e al tuo legittimo superiore, filiale rispetto ed obbedienza. Sì, lo prometto. Dio che ha iniziato in te la sua opera, la porti a compimento. Prometti al Vescovo Diocesano e al tuo legittimo superiore, filiale rispetto e obbedienza. Sì, lo prometto. Dio che ha iniziato in te la sua opera, la porti a compimento. Prometti al Vescovo Diocesano e al tuo legittimo superiore, 
filiale rispetto e obbedienza. Sì, lo prometto. Dio che ha iniziato in te la sua opera la porti a compimento. Prometti al Vescovo Diocesano e al tuo legittimo superiore filiale rispetto e obbedienza. Sì, lo prometto. Dio che ha iniziato in te la sua opera la porti a compimento. Prometti al Vescovo Diocesano e al tuo legittimo superiore filiale rispetto e obbedienza. Sì, lo prometto. Dio che ha iniziato in te la sua the opera of the saints, la porti a compimento. For this, the candidates prostrate themselves in an act of humility, love, and complete self-giving to God, who has called them to the priesthood. During this act, the congregation will ask for the intercession of the saints, for those who are about to be ordained priests. The congregation Preghiamo, remains standing for this whole thing. Carissimi, Dio Padre My dear people, let us pray Perché that the all-powerful Father may pour out the gifts of heaven on these servants of his, he has chosen to be priests. First act, ask three times for the Lord's mercy. Then beginning with the Holy Mother of God, we ask all of the saints to pray for these young men who are about to begin their journey as priests. few weeks of the Easter season, we've been reading from the book of Revelation. In that book, we get a vision of heaven, and what John sees in heaven is a type of celebration, a wedding feast even, and what the church has always seen from this is that it is a view of the heavenly worship, that in the mass we participate within. It is precisely there, and in this image that you can see right now, that all the saints and angels worship before the throne of God. And here on earth, when we participate in the Mass, we worship with them. The Eucharist then is the joining of heaven and earth together. So present in every Mass are all the saints and angels who worship along with us. And in this act of calling upon them and asking for their help, we make them present, but only to us consciously because they are always there with us, asking God to bless us and give us the strengths and graces that we need.
having finished the the part of invo invoking all of the saints, um, we pass to another part, which is more these intercessions we're making to God, asking him to preserve us from evil, from sin, from eternal death, to save us by his incarnation. All these different simple things, remembering the life of Christ who has come, who has saved us. And then also praying for the church, praying for the Pope, praying for the men about to be ordained and to bless them in their ministry, that they may be men of the Holy Spirit. these men about to be ordained have just finished an eight days silent retreat of spiritual exercises uh, to prepare themselves for this great moment which will we will be passing to in a moment when we have the laying on of the hands of the consecratory prayer when these men actually become priests Ascolta, o oh Padre, la Hear nostra preghiera e fondi la benedizione dello Spirito Santo e la potenza della grazia sacerdotale su questi tuoi figli. Noi li presentiamo a te, Dio di misericordia, perché siano consacrati e ricevano l'inesauribile ricchezza del tuo dono. Per Cristo nostro Signore. So now we will begin with each of the deacons will pass before the bishop and he will lay their hands upon him. This signifies the beginning of the, con of the consecration rite, which will end <coughs> with the consecratory prayer. It is accomplished through laying on of hands in the prayer of consecration. In silence, the celebrant will place his hands upon the head of each deacon. This sign from the time of the Apostles has been a gesture that signified the transmission of the sacramental power of the Holy Spirit. Some of the superiors and other priests present, which will represent the community of priests, will also lay their hands upon the candidates as a sign of communion in the priesthood. The congregation will be standing, remain in silence praying for each one, and we invite you, each one, also to pray for them.
This song was composed by Legionary of Christ, by Vincent Herman. It is invoking the Holy Spirit to descend upon the face of the earth to inspire us, to bless us, to give us the strength that we need to accomplish our mission as Christians. The laying on of hands goes back all the way to ancient Israel. It was a sign of selection for someone that's picked out for a special mission. It showed a sign of confidence in a person, united confidence. And it also relayed a special mission to a person. Interesting, interestingly enough as well, the laying on of hands was very important in sacrificial rites where the priest would lay his hands upon the sacrificial victim that would then be sacrificed in remission for the sins of the people. This is a very symbolic act that these deacons will, in a sense, take on our sins, primarily in the the sacrament of confession, forgive us of our sins. They will become a sacrificial victim on our behalf. In the New Testament, we see in Acts 6, that they were looking for deacons that could do some of the work amongst the early community. And it says they sent seven before the apostles who, went, who after praying, laid their hands on them. So this act goes all the way back to the first communities of Christians. And in this act, in a special way, the Holy Spirit is poured out, although in a very silent way, but in a powerful way nonetheless.
The second moment in the ordination to the priesthood now takes place. The candidates kneel before the celebrant, who with his arms extended, pronounces the prayer of consecration. This prayer constitutes the form of the sacrament. The prayer explains and affects the meaning of the laying on of hands. The words written in capital letters that the bishop will be will say after the rite of the laying on of hands and the prayer of consecration, the candidates will be priests forever in the line of Melchizedek. Before this takes place, however, now as we can see, the superiors are coming to lay the hands on the deacon's head, again out of sign of community with all the rest of the priests in the world. This priest here in front is Father John Connor, who's the general director of the Legionaries of Christ. This is Father Christopher Brackett. He is the rector of the theologians, so as the most immediate superior to these deacons, and is also the spiritual director of many of the brothers in the community. Before arriving to the actual consecratory prayer, when these priests are consecrated, it just seems interesting to point out that the priest really is consecrated, just like bread and wine are consecrated, turned into the body and blood of Christ, just like an altar or a church is consecrated. Means they're taken apart. They're set apart by God for this special mission. Set apart, made holy by God. So that's why it's a consecration. They're, in a way, cut out from the world and made holy by God. Sun, radiant. 
This is a good time to try and introduce a few of these priests, um, the ones that at least appear on the screen. This one right in front of us here, Father Mathieu, is a priest from, well, a deacon about to be ordained a priest from France, um, and presently he is working in Brazil. He's from Argentina and currently he is working in Mexico.
Christ is someone that I will be with you as a light and a guide and a voice. So you can imagine how emotional it must be for each of them to hear this song at this moment. Just over to our left here, where you can't see his face, is Father Eric Burkel, who's currently working in Ecuador. This to our left is Father Michael Hem from Germany. Father John Van Dorp, presently working in Atlanta in the United States. This is Father Melchior. He is from France and is presently working in Mexico.
We now arrive to the consecratory prayer, after which all these deacons will officially be priests. O Signore, Padre Santo, Dio Onnipotente ed Eterno, artefice della dignità umana, dispensatore di ogni grazia, che fai vivere e sostieni tutte le creature e le guidi in una continua crescita, Come to our help, Lord, assistici Father, con il tuo aiuto. Per formare il popolo sacerdotale, tu hai disposto in essi in diversi ordini con, lo spirit, con la potenza dello Spirito Santo, i ministri del Cristo tuo figlio. Nell'antica alleanza presero forma e figura i vari uffici istituiti per il servizio liturgico, a Mosè e ad Arone, da te presenti per reggere e santificare il tuo popolo, associasti collaboratori che li seguivano nel grado e nella dignità. Nel cammino dell'esodo comunicaste a 70 uomini saggi e prudenti lo spirito di Mosè tuo servo, perché egli potesse guidare più agevolmente con il loro aiuto il tuo popolo. Tu rendesti partecipi i figli di Aronne della pienezza del loro padre, perché non mancasse mai nella tua tenda il servizio sacerdotale previsto dalla legge per l'offerta dei sacrifici che erano ombra delle realtà future. Nella pienezza dei tempi, Padre Santo, hai mandato nel mondo il tuo figlio Gesù, apostolo e pontefice della fede che noi professiamo. Per opera dello Spirito Santo, Egli si offrì a te, vittima senza macchia, e rese partecipi della Sua missione i Suoi apostoli consacrandoli nella verità. Tu aggregasti ad essi dei collaboratori nel ministero per annunziare e attuare l'opera della salvezza. Ora, o oh Signore, vieni in aiuto alla nostra debolezza e donaci questi collaboratori di cui abbiamo bisogno per l'esercizio del sacerdozio apostolico. Dona, o oh Padre Onnipotente, a questi Tuoi figli la dignità del presbiterato. Rinnova in loro l'effusione del Tuo Spirito di Santità. Adempiano fedelmente, o oh Signore, il ministero del secondo grado sacerdotale da te ricevuto e con il loro esempio guidino tutti a un'integra condotta di vita. Siano degni cooperatori dell'ordine episcopale perché la parola del Vangelo mediante la loro predicazione con la grazia dello Spirito Santo fruttifichi nel cuore degli uomini e raggiunga i confini della terra. Siano insieme con noi fedeli dispensatori dei tuoi perché il tuo popolo sia rinnovato con il lavoro di rigenerazione e nutrito alla mensa del tuo altare, siano riconciliati so i peccatori e i malati ricevano solo Siano uniti a noi, o oh Signore, nell'implorare la in tua misericordia per il popolo a loro affidato e per il mondo world. intero. Thus, Così la moltitudine delle genti riunita in Cristo diventi il tuo unico popolo che avrà il compimento nel tuo regno. Per il nostro Signore Gesù Cristo, tuo Lord Figlio, Jesus Christ, che è Dio, son, who lives e vive e regna with con you te, in the Holy Spirit, nell'unità dello Spirito Santo, God, per tutti i secoli dei secoli. Church officially has 28 new priests. Thanks be to God. Now we sing a traditional song. It says you are priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. During this song, we will be 
vesting the new priests in their priestly garments. They're removing the deacon stash, sash, or stole, and putting it as a priest will have it. These vestments are a visible sign of the sacred character of their ministry. And as you can see, the brother priests are helping them to vest. Brother Sebastian from Italy. The last one is Brother Daniel from Mexico. Brother Andres from Colombia. Brother Michel from Mexico. Brother Tamsin from Vietnam. Brother Adrian from the United States. Cesar from Colombia. Brother Luke from the United States. Brother Dane in the United States. Brother Lucas from Brazil. Brother Carlos from Brazil. Brother Aron from Mexico. Brother John from the United States.
Brother Juan Pablo from Mexico. Brother Daniel from Mexico. Brother Martin from France. Brother John Kim from Korea. Brother George from France. Brother Jorge from Mexico. Brother Eric from the United States. The Father anointed our Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. May Jesus preserve you to sanctify the Christian people and to offer sacrifice to God. Right now they are anointing the hands. The new priest will present their hands to the celebrant who anoints them with holy chrism. The word Christ means anointed. The anointing of hands reminds us that each one of these priests is another Christ. It's traditional, too, after the Mass is over, that many people, when they come to the priest, they kiss their hands. A sign of veneration for the hands that will do so much for them, forgive their sins, bring baptism to their children, help them in marriage. So many things that these priests will not be able to do for us for our good, to help us to know and love our Lord Jesus Christ more and more.
Signore Gesù Cristo, che il Padre ha consacrato in spirito santo e potenza, ti custodisca per la santificazione del suo popolo e per l'offerta del sacrificio. Il Signore Gesù Cristo, che il Padre ha consacrato in spirito santo e potenza, si custodisca per la santificazione del suo popolo e per l'offerta del sacrificio. Il Signore Gesù Cristo, che il Padre ha consacrato in Spirito Santo e Potente, si custodisca per la santificazione del suo popolo e per l'offerta del sacrificio. Oil has always been something used in the Old Testament for the ancient Israelites and especially in the New Testament. We all are anointed with holy oil at our baptism. We are anointed again at our confirmation. We receive the Holy Spirit. Now these priest's hands are anointed. And then once again, at our last moments, at the end of our life, we are anointed once again with holy oil asking for healing of the body, but especially healing of the soul. Oil in the Old Testament was always used to anoint priests, kings, and prophets. So every time we see oil, we remember our call to be a priest who can offer prayers and sacrifices on our behalf and the behalf of others, prophets who can announce the word and gospel of the Lord, and as kings who are called to rule justly here on earth to bring about the kingdom of Christ.
Now they're doing the presentation of the bread and wine. <clears throat> the celebrant presents the paten with bread and the chalice filled with wine to each one of the new priests. This action emphasizes that the priest is ordained to celebrate the Eucharist sacrifice. That as a priest, he participates in the redemptive suffering and cross of Christ. Accept from the holy people of God the gifts to be offered to him. Med meditate on what you are doing and imitate the mystery you celebrate. Model your life on the mystery of the Lord's cross. Ricevi le offerte del popolo santo per il sacrificio eucaristico. Renditi conto di ciò che farai. Imita ciò che celebrerai. Conforma la tua vita al mistero della croce di Cristo Signore. Ricevi le offerte del popolo santo per il sacrificio eucaristico. Renditi conto di ciò che farai. Imita ciò che celebrerai. Conforma la tua vita al mistero della This gesture is a very beautiful one for us legionaries because a lot of times we can get lost in the in where we're going to go, the mission we're going to be doing, the country. But the primary mission of every priest, of each and every legionary, is above all to celebrate the Eucharist and to be the Eucharist for others, to be broken to, to give his life in that way. That is his primary mission, the Mass, the sacraments, nourishing God's faithful. And this this moment here really helps remind each and every one of us that that is what this vocation is about above all. Ricevi le offerte del popolo santo per il sacrificio eucaristico. Renditi conto di ciò che farai. Imita ciò che celebrerai. Conforma la tua vita al mistero della croce di Cristo Signore. Ricevi le offerte del popolo santo per il sacrificio eucaristico. Renditi conto di ciò che farai. Imita ciò che celebrerai. Conforma la tua vita al mistero della croce di Cristo Signore.
sacrificio eucaristico, renditi conto di ciò che farai, imita ciò che celebrerai, conforma la tua vita al mistero della croce di Cristo Signore. Now this will conclude the rite of ordination with the sign of peace. The celebrant and some of the other priests present embrace them as a sign of their bond of charity. Many of these priests, actually all of them tomorrow will be celebrating their first masses at different churches throughout Rome. For example, some of them will be celebrating their mass, their first mass at the seminary in which they studied for many of their years. And the brothers that are studying in Rome currently are going out to different masses to be with them and celebrate this beautiful moment. Also, as we will see, they will be able to give their first blessings, usually given to the parents. As well, they'll be hearing their first confessions in these days. It'll be a time of many great graces. And if any of you have a chance to encounter some of these new priests, the first blessings of a priest carry with it many special graces. So take advantage of that opportunity. Cardinal Giuseppe is a great friend of the Legion. He spends time with us for a few weeks every summer. And so he knows personally many of these brothers, and many of these brothers know him personally. So this is a beautiful moment for both him and these priests, excuse me, I'm still calling them brothers, that'll take some time to get used to. What a special moment. We have to see many of them go through at least six years in Rome, studying three years of philosophy and then three years of theology. Some of them study an extra year or two if they want to do a master's program in either philosophy or theology. And then some, not yet, but some might be asked to do a doctorate, which most likely would also be done in Rome. So we spend much of our time here in Rome. The idea being we can be as close as we possibly can to St. Peter, to all the history that also does so much to teach us about our faith, to teach us about the priesthood, the beautiful opportunity that we have to be formed in this beautiful city. For example, this church is dedicated to St. Paul, one of the patrons of the Legion. We always look to him as a great example of what it means to be both contemplative and evangelizing. Contemplative meaning that Christ calls us to him. We meditate, we focus on his sacred heart. We experience the love that he has for us, for each one of us personally. And through that love, then, we realize that he calls us out to an important mission. St. Paul, at first conversion, 
many of us think that he had this conversion and then immediately ran out to evangelize. But actually he spent three years in prayer before going out to begin the evangelization that he began. So these priests having 12 years of reformation, many of them have had a deep, profound encounter with the love of Christ for each of them. And then from there, they're able to preach Christ as evangelizers. Pray for them that that relationship with Christ is truly, truly a deep connection. Because as he tells us, he is the vine, we are the branches, without him we can do nothing. It's only if they're connected closely to the vine that they're able to bear fruit in their evangelization. So all these new priests, these ones just ordained, they celebrate their first personal mass tomorrow as the prime prime celebrant. But this mass, uh, these moments when they will be con celebrating here with the presider, with Cardinal Bertello, they also will be consecrating the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. And so this is a very special moment for each and every one of them, something they've waited for for this, for these long 10, 11, 12, 13 years. And this moment is now arriving as they prepare the altar.
vostro fratelli e sorelle, perché il mio e vostro sacrificio sia gradito a Dio, Padre Onnipotente. We now begin the liturgy of the Eucharist. Pray, brethren, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, o for Dio, our good and the good of all his holy church. Father, in your plan for salvation, you have appointed priests to minister to your people at your holy altar. By the power of this sacrament, may their priestly service always be pleasing to you and bring lasting good to your church. Through Christ our Lord. Il Signore sia con voi, in alto i nostri cuori. Rendiamo grazie al Signore nostro Dio. È veramente cosa buona e giusta, nostro dovere e fonte di salvezza, rendere grazie sempre in ogni luogo a Te, o oh Signore, Padre Santo, Dio Onnipotente ed Eterno. By your Holy Spirit, you appointed your only Son, High Priest, of the new and eternal covenant. With wisdom and love, you have planned that this one priesthood should continue in the Church. Christ gives the dignity of a royal priesthood to the people. He has made his own. From these, with a brother's love, he chooses men to share his sacred ministry by the laying on of hands. He appoints them to renew in his name the sacrifice of our redemption as they set before your family his paschal meal. He calls them to lead your holy people in love, nourish them by your word, and strengthen them through the sacraments. Father, they are to give their lives in your service and for the salvation of your people as they strive to grow in the likeness of Christ and honor you by their courageous witness of faith and love. We praise you, Lord, with all the angels and saints in their song of joy. Here you can see all the newly ordained priests to the left and right of the altar as they prepare for this moment. Padre, ed è giusto che ogni creatura ti lodi. Per mezzo del tuo Figlio, il Signore nostro Gesù Cristo, nella potenza dello Spirito Santo, fai vivere e santifichi l'universo e continui a radunare intorno a te un popolo che dall'Oriente all'Occidente offre al tuo nome il sacrificio perfetto. Ti preghiamo umilmente, santifica e consacra con il tuo Spirito i doni che ti abbiamo presentato, perché diventino il corpo e il sangue del tuo Figlio, il Signore nostro Gesù Cristo, che ci ha comandato di celebrare questi misteri. Egli, nella notte in cui veniva tradito, prese il pane, ti rese grazie con la preghiera di benedizione, lo spezzò, 
lo diede ai suoi discepoli e disse «Prendete e mangiatene tutti. Questo è il mio corpo, offerto in sacrificio per voi». Allo stesso modo, dopo aver cenato, prese il calice, ti rese grazie con la preghiera di benedizione, lo diede ai suoi discepoli e disse, «Prendete e bevetene tutti. Questo è il calice del mio sangue per la nuova ed eterna alleanza, versato per voi e per tutti in remissione dei peccati. Fate questo in memoria di me». Mistero della fede. Proclamiamo la tua misericordia nella tesa della tua venuta, nella tesa della tua Celebrando il memoriale della passione redentrice del Tuo Figlio, della Sua mirabile risurrezione ed ascensione al cielo, nell'attesa della Sua venuta nella gloria, Ti offriamo, Padre, in rendimento di grazie, questo sacrificio vivo e santo. Guarda con amore e riconosci nell'offerta della Tua Chiesa la vittima immolata per la nostra redenzione. E a noi che ci nutriamo del corpo e del sangue del Tuo Figlio, dona la pienezza dello Spirito Santo, perché diventiamo in Cristo un solo corpo e un solo Spirito. Lo Spirito Santo faccia di noi un'offerta perenne a Te gradita, perché possiamo tenere il regno promesso insieme con i Tuoi eletti con la Beata Maria, Vergine e Madre di Dio, con San Giuseppe, suo Esposo, con i tuoi Santi Apostoli, il glorioso Martire, e tutti i Santi, nostri intercessori presso di te. Ti preghiamo, Padre, questo sacrificio di riconciliazione doni pace e salvezza al mondo intero. Conferma nella fede e nell'amore la tua accesa pellegrina sulla terra, il tuo servo e nostro Papa Francesco, il Vescovo Cardinale Giuseppe che presiede questa celebrazione, l'ordine episcopale, i presbiteri e i diaconi. As you can see around the, the tops of the arches are all the popes throughout Christian history. Beautiful reminder that Christ Church really does continue on from Peter all the way to Pope Francis. And it is because of this, what we call apostolic succession, that the command that Christ gave to his apostles to go and baptize all the nations, forgiving their sins, can still be done by these men who were just ordained priests. Per Cristo, con Cristo e in Cristo, a te Dio Padre Onnipotente, nell'unità dello Spirito Santo, ogni onore e gloria per tutti i secoli dei secoli.
it's beautiful, beautiful to consider that there are so many different cultures and languages represented here, and yet we can all gather together as one body in Christ, and we're about to share the same prayer that Christ gave us thousands of years ago. It's truly a sign of the unity that is possible in the world today. Liberaci, o oh Signore, da tutti i mali, concedi la pace ai nostri giorni e con l'aiuto della Tua misericordia vivremo sempre liberi dal peccato e sicuri da ogni turbamento. Nell'attesa che si compia la beata speranza e venga il nostro Salvatore Gesù Cristo. Signore Gesù Cristo, che hai detto ai tuoi apostoli, vi lascio la pace, vi do la mia pace, non guardare ai nostri peccati, ma alla fede della tua Chiesa, e dona le unità e pace secondo la tua volontà, tu che vivi e regni nei secoli dei secoli. La pace del Signore sia sempre con voi. Ecco l'agnello di Dio, ecco colui che toglie i peccati del mondo. Beati gli invitati alla cena dell'agnello. O oh Signore, non so fare alla Tua mensa, ma di soltanto una parola e io sarò salvato. We're now about to begin communion, and we'll probably see many shots of the newly ordained priests giving communion to their family for the first time. It's probably my favorite part. Probably get to see a lot of tears from moms. There are various communion songs that are sung. Um, the first two are written by legionaries. Once again, Vincent, Father Vincent Herman. Um, and the second one is written by two brothers, actually. One of them is, was just recently ordained a priest, I believe, um, called It Audi It Di And it is a song about a dialogue between the church, Christ, and the souls. This first one, though, Tanto amo Dios al mundo, How Much God Has Loved the World based on John 3.16. Um, speaks about that sacred heart, which has incarnated itself, come down to earth, and died for us on the cross.
for all of you watching this because you cannot receive communion in person I invite you to make an act of spiritual communion I will recite a prayer and then afterwards we'll just have a moment of silence giving thanks to God my Jesus I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Speaking a little bit of the families, there's a few traditions that have passed on through passed down through history um, of the church. One of them is after the priest's hands are anointed, he goes to a little side altar and he has to he wipes the oil on a purificator or a small white linen cloth. He then takes that cloth, or at least this is the tradition, and he gives it to his mother. And then when she dies, she is buried with this cloth. And supposedly when she arrives to heaven, she's able to show it to St. Peter and say, I've given you a priest. And I guess it's kind of hard for St. Peter to say, okay, you gotta go. And he basically lets, lets her pass. And there's another tradition that the first confession that these new priests hear that stole, they go and give it to their dad from whom they have learned to forgive, from whom they've learned to love as well. And then their dad also is buried with that stone. And just these two beautiful gestures, which are also very powerful for the family, but very powerful for the newly ordained priest. You know, that so much that they have received comes through their, their parents, their families. And, and it's also their families that share in this sacrifice you know, of these new priests. It's been a long 13 years for them to wait. It hasn't been easy. I mean, sometimes you go two, three years without seeing the priest while they're, or the brothers while they're studying, whatever it may be. And so that sacrifice also is, in a way, equally felt by all the families who feel them, who feel just as much joy as all these new priests who are ordained, because they've waited, they've suffered with these new priests, they've accompanied them through these long years through this long path of formation and it's just a beautiful moment to really watch them share together this moment and
only reason we've been able to have a celebration as beautiful as this is because at some point in one of these men's lives, someone planted the seed of the vocation, whether it be through example or through a word, through a prayer. So just keep in mind the importance of praying for vocations, you know, speaking to young men about the priestly vocation, young women for the vocation to consecrate life. Many times it takes the work or word of another to help plant that seed that God wants to grow into a beautiful vocation. So let's pray for vocations throughout the world. Obviously, let's say a special prayer for these priests as they take that next step in the vocation that God has given them. Prima di concludere la celebrazione, canteremo il Magnifica, il canto di lode di Maria, Madre della Chiesa. Before concluding the celebration of the Holy Mass, we will sing the Magnificat, Magnificat, this song of praise of Mary, Mother of the Church and of all priests. With this hymn, we want to give thanks to God for the wonders that the Lord has worked in the new priests and to ask Mary the gift of her per of perseverance.
There are certain prayers that priests have to pray every day. It's called the bereavery, and they pray at different times during the day. This is a prayer, the Magnificat. That is one of those prayers that is prayed every day. This is the prayer that Mary offered to our Lord after visiting her cousin Elizabeth. And Elizabeth gave her honor for the role that she has as Mother of God. And rather than turning that praise on herself, she sent it immediately to God, who has worked so many great things in her soul. This prayer is very important to us as legionaries because after major steps in our vocation, we also pray this prayer. So after our first time of uh, making the vows, we pray it. Every time we renew the vows, we offer this prayer. And obviously, after becoming priests, we offer this prayer as well. So it's a reminder of the long history and the long formation they've gone through to see that God continues working wonderful things in their souls. Let us pray. Lord, may the sacrifice we offer and receive sanctify your church. Give life to your priests and all your people. Give them joined to you by a love that will never end. And make them worthy members of your household. We ask this through the name of Jesus the Lord. It's a special blessing now for the newly ordained priests. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May the Almighty God, who directs and governs the church, sustain and fortify your hearts so that you may faithfully fulfill your priestly ministry. Amen. May he make you servants and witnesses in the world of the truth and divine love and faithful ministers of reconciliation. May he make you true pastors that distribute the word of the life and living bread so that all the faithful grow in the unity of the body of Christ. And, and on all present, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. A beautiful and powerful reflection, powerful reflection that was shared with us by a wise priest is that during this applause right now, what the new priest should be thinking of are the blows of the hammer as they strike the nails into the hands of each one of them. We're not clapping for them as who they are as persons, but for who they represent. And Christ calls priests to offer their lives on behalf of each and every one of us. Each of them are called to be crucified as Christ was crucified. It's an offering for the world. One important note is that 
in this class there's actually 37 deacons total nine of them are being ordained at a later date simply for personal reasons such as families that cannot travel here or illnesses within the family so we still have nine more deacons to be ordained pray for them as well as you keep this class in your prayers We want to thank all of you for joining us for this beautiful, wonderful celebration. We ask you to please keep praying for all of the brothers here in Realm and Formation, all the brothers throughout the world in Formation. Please pray for vocations. Please pray for these new priests. And God bless. Know that we will be praying for each and every one of you as well. May God's kingdom come. Thank you very much. Ciao, ciao, ciao.